Welcome to the Dear Professor series, where college students who take courses online speak their minds. I am your host and e-learning strategist, Dr. Kelly Alston, who is honored to have a conversation with today's guest as she sheds light on her experiences as an online student. I've been teaching online since 2004 and made the tough decision to obtain my PhD through an online program. So I have been both an online instructor and an online student. As a result, I know that there are some wonderful things happening with online programs, as well as some not so wonderful things going on. This series aims to help professors and students experience a more fulfilling online learning environment by allowing students to reveal their needs and their pet peeves. My hope is that this information will support professors in making the necessary changes or adjustments in the design and delivery of their online courses, which should ultimately enhance student success and satisfaction with distance education. So, if you are interested in hearing what students have to say about their lived experiences online, please hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that every Wednesday at 8 p.m., the latest episode will come straight to you. Also, feel free to comment about anything said and ask questions. If you are listening via a podcast platform, please be sure to follow and rate the series so that your interest and opinion of the show are made known. Today, I'm honored to be sharing this time and space with Miss Elsie Barnes. So how are you doing this afternoon, Elsie? I'm wonderful. How about you? I'm doing well. Now, Elsie, tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay. A little bit about me is that my name is Elsa Regina Barnes, but I prefer to be called by my middle name, which is Regina. I'm 57 years old, and I live in Conway, North Carolina. I have two children, a son, Hashan, 30 years old, and a daughter, Maya, 22 years old. I have a fiancé, Roger, and we are planning a wedding for April the 6th of 2024. My mom passed in April of 2019, and to occupy my time and my mind, my hobby became planting flowers in my yard and also creating a flower bed full of different kinds of flowers, uh, purple flowers, because that was her favorite color. I also enjoy playing basketball, shopping, and spending time with my family. In 2004, I was hired as a teacher assistant in the pre-K department of Northampton County Schools. And in December of 2021, I graduated cum laude from North Carolina Central University with a degree in birth kindergarten. In January of 2022, I was hired as a pre-K teacher assistant within the same county. And I love just, I just love being a teacher because I get to teach, nurture, and touch the lives of so many sweet young children. Oh, Elsie, we learned so much about you. You are such an interesting person. Now, first, I just want to express my condolences um, on the passing of your mother. And I just think it is beautiful that you are planting flowers, her favorite color flowers, you know, in your yard. So tell me about that, because, you know, I'm not, well, you may not know, but I'm not good with you know, planting flowers and making the yard look beautiful. So how does that work? They, these flowers, is, is it fall, spring? Tell me a little bit about they it. They mainly bloom in the spring and summer, and they are perennials, so they come back every year. There's not a lot, whole lot to do to it, but just keep, keep them fertilized, and they will come back every year as pretty as ever. Oh, so that's the kind of flowers I need that you don't have to do much to them. And so when you right. when you drive up, you get to it makes you remember your mother even more by seeing those flowers. Yes. Right. Yeah, that's beautiful. Right. Now, let's talk about this wedding you have coming up April the 6th to Mr. Roger. Are you excited? I am excited, but I'll be even more excited when I get through my brother's wedding this weekend. 
and I can focus more on mine. I know, right? Are you a bridezilla? Are you being, <laughs> are you stressed out, stressing people out or not? No, I'm not. I'm not. Oh, yeah. You sound too sweet to be a bridezilla. And so y'all have two weddings going on. So your family is growing and growing. Yes, it is. Uh, and last but not least, these adult children. I see you have a 22-year-old and a 30-year-old. My daughter's 17, and I am just so... Were you nervous when they got ready to go into adulthood? Like when they got out of high school? Or how did you handle yes. it? Yes, I had to um, remember that, you know... My mom had to clip my wings and let me go on my own. So I had to focus on doing the same thing with them. It wasn't easy, but it had to be done. Yeah, we'll have to talk about that. Maybe you can give me a few therapy sessions. <laughs> <Sure. Later. laughs> okay, well, Elsie, what is your general experience with taking courses online? Did you get your whole degree online? Did you just take a few classes? Tell us about that. Well, yes, I got my whole degree online. So after um, high school, I went to the community college um, in my town, and I got a degree in early childhood education. Uh, and after then, I also went on to a four-year college, um, which I was my mama's baby out of nine children. So I went to this four-year college, but I became very homesick, and I went back home after only two weeks. I then joined the workforce as a teacher assistant, but I wasn't very happy because I wanted to become a teacher. So that had always been my childhood dream. But in um, 2015, a recruiter from North Carolina Central University came out to my, uh, to my county to talk to a group of TAs about going back to school. So I decided to attend that seminar. Um, online courses were my best option to get into a degree because I live two hours away from North Carolina Central University. Um, mm. I was working full time and I began taking two courses a semester. So yes, it took me a while being strictly online, but now I see that it was well worth the wait. Yes, because you know what I admire about you is that you were working, right? Isn't that yes. what you said? Oh, so you were in school and working. Right. And so you recognize that it's like the tortoise and the hare, <laughs> you know, where the, the tortoise ended up winning the race because he was consistent and right. stayed on the path. And you just took two courses. And that's a message for a student right now who's trying to, I find that students are always trying to rush. You know, I want to graduate by this year. And you're taking five classes and yeah. can't handle that. You know, it's, it's too much. And so I think that was really good that you had a, a focus for a goal. And you said two courses a semester is enough for me and I will eventually get there. And you did, didn't you? That's right. Yes, and I did. It took a while, but I made it. <laughs> That's right. And I heard you slide in there that you were the baby out of nine children. Yes. <laughs> Are you the first one in your family to go to college or did your other siblings go as well? Some of my other siblings went. Not all. Not everybody. It's not because college is not for everybody, but some of That's them true. went. That's true. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. So, Elsie, when you think about your online courses overall on a scale of one to 10, with 10 being outstanding and one being horrific, what rating would you give and why? Um, hmm. Okay. I believe I would give it about an eight. And okay. the reason. And the reason I say that is because at first I was like, I can't do that. I cannot just sit in front of a computer all day. But <laughs> um, now that I have had this experience of working on at my own pace and meeting requirements at my own time and knowing that I had to have an assignment in by so-and-so time, I can truly say I like that better than sitting in the classroom in front of an instructor, you know, as if I was right. in high school. So I would give it an eight because once you get into the habit of and learn how to do everything, it becomes mm -hmm. second nature. Well, wow, that's a nice high score for distance learning. Yay. Yes. I love it. <laughs> 
Okay, so let's talk about your needs as an online student. Now, a need is defined as something you require because it is essential or very important. So when you are taking an online course, what do you require or desire to be successful in the virtual classroom? Okay, so when taking um, an online course, Um, I discovered that I definitely needed a laptop with a reliable internet service. Um, I needed a textbook if one was required, a binder for organization of the class syllabus and other important papers as well. Um, it It was good that I took the technology course first, my first semester, because I literally did not know much about computers. Um, but what I didn't learn in the computer course, my daughter assisted me when when I needed her help. So it was important enough. It was it was important for me to have that family support and to set aside that time to study and meet assignment requirements. OK, so you you needed a laptop. Let's just recap with Internet service, a binder uh-huh. to keep yourself organized and right. family support. So let's talk about this binder for a second. Somebody might say, well, with your online, everything's on the screen. What do you need a binder for? What would you say to that person? Because you need order. Everything is done according to order. So if you have everything you need in that banner, you can just go back and flip to any section you might be looking for. And, you know, you don't have to just have paper strode everywhere like I used to do when I was in high school. You're just organizing yourself. And it's easy to say that, you know, if I got a test, I can go right back and look at the syllabus and say, okay, well, I know I got a test next week, so I need to get to studying. Very good. So that's a good study habit that Elsie gave you for free 99 if you're listening. (laughs) So (laughs) if what you're doing is not working, get a binder and print your syllabus, print your assignments and have that visual there in front of your face. Now, Elsie, when you log into the course, though, what do you need from your professor to be successful? When I log into my course. Mm -hmm, And you're taking this course. What do you need from the professor? What do I For need? any of the professors out here listening, what what do you some advice you could give them in terms of the things that you need as a student? I for one, I need to know if I'm not getting everything I need, or if I need that extra help. I need to know when I can reach out to you. I need a phone number. I need a text. And when can I text you? When are what are your office hours? I need to know. Um. What I need to do if anything should go left field, when can I come to you? I'm taking notes. So you want to know how can you reach out? So they need to express clearly their their office hours and that phone number. That's a good thing because you'll be surprised how many instructors will not give out their phone numbers. Did you come across that when you were online? I did. Yeah, so you you would like to have, even if they have to use a Google number, right? Like it's not really their number, but <laughs> it's a number you can call to reach them. Right. And, and office hours. And then if something happens, do you mean like with the internet or what do you mean exactly when something goes left? When, you know, if, if I have a family emergency and can't get okay. class, you know, what do I need to do? Who do I need okay. to do? Very good. All right, Elsie. Now, I, I want to throw this question out at you. There's a topic that concerns me when it comes to online courses, and that is the development of soft skills. And in April, Forbes.com published an article entitled 11 Essential Soft Skills in 2023. And the major point that stood out is that soft skills are essential for success in a wide range of industries and professions because they are those people skills, those interpersonal skills that allow us to effectively interact with others in a professional setting. I like to think of them as transferable skills because you need them whether you are an employee, an entrepreneur, a volunteer, no matter what you decide to do in life. The soft skills that they listed included work ethic, communication, teamwork, conflict management, creativity, leadership, 
problem solving, critical thinking, emotional intelligence, adaptability, and time management. So when you think about your online program overall, how did it enhance the development of your soft skills? It enhanced it a lot because some of those skills, they just weren't there for me. It Taking online courses sort of like matured me to get ready for my field of study. Mm. Tell us more about that. What do you mean? How did it mature you? Um, for one, I wasn't as punctual. <laughs> I was not <laughs> as punctual at, at meeting time demands. Okay. Um, so now that I'm a teacher and I have to get a lesson plan in at a certain time, I can do that now um, because I've had that training with having to meet time for um, assignments. And also with a collaborating piece, um, having to, to to collaborate with your team players, your team workers, um, I have arrived because of my online courses. I I can able I'm able to voice my opinion within the group, and oh, not that's feel shy wonderful. and you know replace it. I so like you it. were a shy you were shy before about somewhat. like working with people? Yeah, mm-hmm. somewhat. I really was. I had that just a fear that I may say the wrong thing. But no answer is wrong until you know you talk about it and find out that your answer really wasn't wrong. You just needed to reword what you were saying. Oh, that is beautiful. I am so glad that your uh, soft skills were enhanced because they are just so important. Now, Elsie, let's talk about your pet peeves. I want to explain what a pet peeve is in case somebody's never heard of it before. A pet peeve is a minor annoyance that an individual finds particularly irritating, something that bothers you more than it bothers others. So your pet peeve may not be someone else's, and that's perfectly okay. Share with us what really annoys you when it comes to online courses. What are your pet peeves, Elsie? Okay. So with online courses, uh, we all know that this world revolves around time. Like (laughs) I just said. And it's only normal to be a few minutes late joining like a virtual course. As long as you get there, you know, not too late. Right. Um, but taking on online courses can be great for collaboration with people in the same field as you. But the thing that annoys me most about online courses, um, I would say, is having to do group projects and some of the participants don't do their part, but they mm-hmm. get the same passing score. Um, it just don't make sense to get a low score because some people don't have great e- um, great ethics for education. Um they want a degree, but they don't want to produce the quality work to get it. Yes, I've been hearing that a lot lately. So is that your only pet peeve that you found in your online courses? Uh, yeah, I, I would say. But other than that, everything kind of flowed pretty well. Okay, that is- you see, you need to be a representative for online. You need to do a commercial for <laughs> online <laughs> courses because you have such positive things to say. Okay, Elsie, well, then let's use our imagination since that was such a short little, you know, segment. Let's use our imagination for a few minutes like we did when we were children. Are you okay. ready? I'm ready. Okay. Go back to the week before you started your very first online course. <laughs> We're getting a time capsule. Okay. Now, pretend I am a genie in a bottle who will grant you three wishes that you can only use while you are pursuing your bachelor's degree online. What would your three wishes be? Woo. Okay. (laughs) So wish number one. Okay. I wish that that genie could type every paper that ever <laughs> that I have ever had to take. Okay. Okay. She gets to type all the papers. Okay. Um. She gets to Number take two. every test. Okay. She takes the test. She writes the papers and what else? 
Um, shoo. Um, one more. One more. She gets to be in the virtual setting when I can't be there. Okay. So she gets going to morph into you in the virtual classroom. Right. And be and be you. Mm-hmm. Okay, there there you have it, those three wishes. All right, I grant them all to you. Voila. <laughs> all right, now, we have made it to our final segment, the Dear Professor segment, where you get the opportunity to share your heart with a fellow professor that you have in mind. Imagine there's an online bulletin board with sticky notes or messages from students to professors. As our featured scribe, share with us the note you would leave one of your online college professors. Okay. So the note would say, dear professor, you never cease to amaze me. You are truly a great educator. Now, I'm going to be honest. There were times during my course load that I was like, there's that professor's name again under two courses that I have to take this semester. I don't want to have to be in that class because whew, you really gave me a loaded syllabus with tons of requirements. But now that I have become a teacher and got my own classroom, I spoke to a coworker and that coworker and I talked and she was like, but that teacher pushed you. And I said, yes, that teacher did push me. And she made play a major part of me becoming the teacher that I am today. Now, all of the things that I've learned about teamwork, collaborating in groups, being a leader, presenting PowerPoints, making study schedules, making binders, reading all the motivating quotes, and most importantly, always remembering to take time of the day out of a day for yourself. So the coworker listened to me talk and she said, you know what? I want my child in your class because whoever that professor was, I know you really learned from her. And I agreed. So she put her child in my class for this school year. So now I push my students just as you pushed me. So dear professor, you are my hero, my motivator, and my friend for life. Keep on being the great, sweet, caring person that you are. Sincerely yours, Elsie Barnes. Oh my goodness, Elsie. Well, that's all that need to be said. That was just so moving. Thank you. (sighs) I'm not going, okay, let me just, wow. When, I mean, it's, that's what teaching's all about, Elsie. It is. It? It's it, the, is. it doesn't matter about how much money we make or don't make. It's just being able to impact somebody's life in that way. Right. Thank you so much for sharing that. I really um, appreciate you sharing You're that. Welcome. Now, I just want to give you all just a recap of what, Elsie said that she needs um, as an online student. Now, for herself, she needed a laptop with internet service. She needed that binder for organization and family support. That's really important when you're pursuing any kind of goals. And then she needed her uh, professor to be accessible. She needs you to provide a phone number that you can be reached. Have those office hours and keep them and also explicitly tell her what she can do um, when she has some type of issue and um, needs to get in contact with you about that. Did I get that right, Elsie? You did. Well, thank you. Elsie, I appreciate you being an educator and taking time out, especially that you are celebrating your brother's wedding this weekend and you decided to spend just a little chunk of time with me and I really appreciate it. I wish you well as you continue to nurture and teach our little ones because we, the world at large, need you now more than ever. Also, congratulations on your upcoming nuptials. I pray that you and your future husband grow closer and closer each day of life's journey 
Thank you. Now, you're welcome. Thank you all for joining us. Remember to comment, like, and share, follow, and subscribe. I look forward to spending time with you next week on the Dear Professor series, where college students who take courses online speak their minds. Bye-bye.